It didn't think I was good enough. Those were the words uttered by Ohio State quarterback Will Howard, referencing Penn State, the team he grew up rooting for. And he'll now have a chance to prove the doubters wrong Saturday afternoon in Happy Valley. Welcome everyone to Keep It A Buck Glance Term Preview Style. We're going to get you up to speed with all you need to know ahead of this top four matchup. So let's keep it a buck. So, Daniela, let's keep it a buck. Obviously, a top four matchup. Will Howard is returning back home. What are you looking forward to the most in this matchup? I feel like there's so many storylines. Yeah, there is so many storylines. I mean, I'm excited to see how he's going to perform. I mean, you said mm -hmm. it himself. He said they didn't think I was good enough. So, are we going to see him, like, extra motivated to prove Coach James Franklin wrong yeah. and the rest of the Penn State staff? I don't know. But, I mean, another top four matchup for the Buckeyes. I'm so excited for that. Yeah, this is going to be a great matchup. Now, let's dive into the history and matchup of these two teams. Yes, of course. I mean, Penn State and Ohio State have been going back and forth for consecutive years, but their last meeting came just last year in 2023, where Ohio State won here in Columbus 20 to 12. Let's see, Marvelous Marv, cannot forget <laughs> him, Marvelous Marv. He had the game-winning touchdown with four minutes left. Now, I don't know if you remember that game, but let's dive in a little bit about it. You know, Penn State, everyone came in and was like, they're going to give Ohio State a run for their money, and they really didn't do that. It was field goal after field goal after field goal. I can't necessarily remember if they made a touchdown, mm -hmm. but they weren't as strong as everyone thought that they'd be, and it was Drew Aller's homecoming for that moment. He's an Ohio native, mm -hmm. so everyone was really anticipating that when he <laughs> came out. Everyone was booing him, and, I mean, I that was a game. I mean, like I said, Marvin Harrison Jr., he had that game-winning touchdown to really seal. I mean, Ohio State had the lead the entire time, but that final touchdown sealed the deal. And for this game, Fox Big Noon Kickoff and ESPN College Game Day are two going of the to big be, dogs. Two of the big dogs are going to be in Happy Valley for wow. this game. So the crowd, the fans are all going to be out there. It's about to be so crazy over there. What are your thoughts on them being there? The both of them. Yeah, that is crazy. Definitely wake up early if you're looking to, <laughs> if you're looking to sit. I know we're waking up early. We're actually going to this one. So wake up early, get there on time, and just have some fun. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great time. Yes. So. And, as for further history, Ohio State has absolutely dominated this series with seven consecutive wins in the past seven years, mm. and they are 24-14 all-time against Penn State. Wow. So they're pretty dominant. They're looking to make it 25. So hopefully they keep that going, make it eight consecutive wins. And Ohio State is favored despite being ranked below Penn State by one spot. They're favored by three and a half points, wow. which I thought was pretty interesting. What do you think about that? Yeah, a lot of that probably has to do with Drew Aller. It's not really determined whether or not he'll start. I'm assuming yeah, he I, will. Yeah. I don't see well, him not Coach, starting. Coach Franklin said it's going to be a Saturday game time yeah, decision. Yeah, game time decision. <laughs> which is... <laughs> That's a choice. Interesting, yeah. Okay, so let's dive into this matchup between Ohio State and Penn State. Yeah, so as going into this game, Ohio State is 6-1. Penn State is undefeated. They are 7-0. Oh. Ohio State is coming off a win against Nebraska. It was a four-point win. You know, it was not the prettiest game that we've seen Ohio State play mm -hmm. whatsoever. You know, defense looked great. Defense was pretty dominant, I would say. Mm -hmm. But the offense just looked like they were asleep until that fourth <laughs> quarter. I mean, they didn't look like that that offense that played against Oregon where they were going back and forth, back yeah. and forth. So, you know. But Nebraska is a good defensive yeah, team, but Ohio Nebraska, State is one of the uh, top, top ten in offense and defense. Yeah, so. exactly. So that's why, I mean, you know, that four-point win, I mean, that's not to say, I mean, Nebraska is a great team. There's absolutely no denying that. But just – not, I mean, they were what a twenty-something point favorite, twenty-five and a half point, yeah, twenty-five favorite. and a half point favorite, and winning by four points. I mean, that's going to make any Not Ohio State fan it. nervous yeah. going into this matchup against Penn State. Yeah. As I said, Penn State's undefeated. They're coming off a road win at Wisconsin, twenty-eight to thirteen. Now, during that game, it was pretty close at one point, but of course, Penn State came back and won. Yeah. They are ranked number three, so they are one spot ahead of Ohio State. And Ohio State fans are going to be seeing a familiar face. Former wide receiver Julian Fleming was, of course, a Buckeye just last year. You know, he committed to Ohio State. He was here. And then once the transfer portal opened, he hit that transfer portal, and he's at Penn State now. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see. Yeah. Is he from, like, that area? I believe so. Yeah. I believe he's from that area of Pennsylvania. So, you know, he chose Ohio State originally and was – just decided to go back home. Well, yeah, I think too. Like he was a he was a former five star recruit, he was, and yeah. obviously you have all these great freshmen and sophomore coming up. I just think he knew he yeah. had a better chance somewhere else. So, 
Ohio State still loves Julian Fleming. Yeah. No <laughs> but on Saturday, obviously, they're going to be, you know, it's competing against each other. Yeah. Different story. Okay, so let's dive in this matchup between Ohio State and Penn State. Now, offensively, as you mentioned, Ohio State struggled, especially with the running game. Quinshawn Jenkins and Travy Anderson started off the first four games, like, basically running, running the ball down teams' and throats. Like, nobody could stop them. Nobody. They would go through any tackle. They would go through a brick wall. Yeah, they could go through a brick <laughs> wall, the two of them. And, I mean, on Saturday, you they were – pretty quiet. They yeah. didn't get the ball moving much. Yeah, and, and that in large part probably has to do with the offensive line. Obviously, Josh Simmons is out. Zen came in, but then he got hurt against Nebraska. He was carted off the field. And so it's just been like they're just trying to find what, what pieces work and what doesn't, right? And obviously, in order to run the ball, you need to have gaps, and they're just not seeing those. And Ryan Day said during his press conference on Tuesday that they have to find a balance between running and throwing the ball. And in order to win against Penn State, they obviously have to do that. And so defensively now, they had a much better performance oh, yeah. against Nebraska <laughs> compared to Oregon, right? Way better. Ryan Day said the team played like, or the defense played like they were possessed, which I feel like they really they did, they did, you know? They played great. I mean, they played awesome. especially after that, you know, the infamous targeting call, <laughs> you know, came, got a, got Perfect a way to end interception it. Perfect immediately way. after the call was finalized. Perfect so, way to end it. So, and then great news there, Arvell Reese cleared to play. Yes, cleared to play. Great things to know. Yes, Arvell Reese is cleared to play. Obviously, Ohio State sent in that play to the Big Ten, and, you know, they reversed the call, and rightfully so. Rightful, I mean, Everyone, fans were throwing stuff on the field. It we turned were right into Texas. There. Yeah, it turned into, t I did not know we were in Austin, Texas at that point. It was uh, my homecoming. But we, we were dodging water bottles, ducking, cans of other beverages, trying to not get hit. So, you know, I mean, I think yeah. that call definitely should have been reversed yeah. during the game. And that yeah. could have changed the whole trajectory of the game. But Ohio thank God State. it didn't. Because if it would have, that would have been literally like the talk of college football. That, and I think it also gives Ohio State a motive. Like, I feel like that's what woke them up and yeah. got them, like, yeah, hungry Jordan to go. Said, yeah. like, they wanted to obviously play for Arvell Reese, right? Like, and he did. And they, he did. He, he, got, did. he got the they pick. Did. So great for Ohio State. And again, defensively, when you look at these two teams, Ohio State is better defensively than Penn State. But Penn State is a great defensive team as yeah, well. I mean, they're second in the nation in stopping the run, which obviously is important because, again, Ryan Day said we need to run the ball. They need to put their stamp on this game early. And then obviously Will Howard, he's returning back home. What are your thoughts on what he said? Because when he said it, I was shocked. I was like, because Will Howard, if you listen to him, he he goes by the book. He says the right thing. But that was like. Very by the book. I mean. All the media was kind of in shock. And I mean, like, we're there watching him. He <laughs> says that. Silence. You could hear a, a pin, pin drop, drop <laughs> in that room. Nobody was typing. Nobody was writing. Everybody just looks around at each other like, did he really just say that? Because like you said, yeah. he is very by the book. He yeah. never says anything wrong. He's very well media trained. Yeah. And not that what he said was wrong. You it wasn't just wouldn't wrong. expect it coming yeah. from him. Yeah. So I thought that that was, I thought it was great personally. Yeah. I thought that it was That was great. amazing. Yeah. I mean, if that's what motivates him. Yeah. Do, do, do your thing. Use that, like, to fuel your fire yeah. for Saturday. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, I'm here for it. Yeah, I yeah, and, and that's is. what he said. He's going. He's, he's used this as motivation throughout his career at Kansas, obviously, and then when he came here to Ohio State, and this game was definitely circled on his calendar, he said. And then, obviously, on the other end, for the quarterback, Drew Aller, again, he was hurt against um, the Badgers, but – he may or may not play game time decision. Ryan Day said they're obviously preparing for both quarterbacks, but I find it very hard to think in a top four matchup that he's not, that he's not going to play. I feel like if he would have been ruled out, he would have been ruled out already, right? So, I agree. I, I definitely think it's a tactic yeah. to kind of <laughs> get Ohio State. Like, okay, yeah. so who are we preparing, preparing yeah. for? Are we preparing for Drew Aller or yeah. the backup? Like, yeah. I think – I, I definitely think he's but going then, to. But then, too, playing. I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of have a mixture of Drew Aller and the backup playing, honestly. You just never know, obviously. Like I said, we don't know the status of his injury with something with, like, a lower leg, obviously. But, again, they might try to just 
you mentioned a tactic, but again, they might play both quarterbacks to see if, if Drew Aller is re really ready to go because it's one thing to, you know, do it in practice, but to do it in the game is a totally different thing when you have 200 and 300 pound men falling on top of you, right? Yeah. And one of those men is obviously JT Tui Maloa. So let's actually go to keep it a buck. Some facts that we found out for you all. So obviously, one of the first, I mentioned JT Tui Maloa. Oh my God. In 2022, one of the best statistical games by a defensive end, or just any player in general, but especially from a defensive end. Six tackles, three tackles for loss, two quarterback sacks, two interceptions, including a pick six, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, and a pass breakup. Okay, I'm out of breath. Hold up. <laughs> that was just a, that was a JT Twin Malow. That gave him the, the name and um Austin Ward, who we worked side by side with for Ohio State football media. He named him JT Tweet Malo Wow because he just went absolutely crazy during that game. What, what do you think about that? I'm surprised we didn't hear from him this week, honestly. I'm shocked we didn't hear from him either, <laughs> actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But I vividly remember watching that game. I showed you a photo that I had of my, uh, back before I even applied to transfer to Ohio State. I'm watching that game, and I just remember being like, that was the first I'd ever heard of JT Tweet Malo mm -hmm. And, I mean, you just – that was insane. You don't you don't see that not in college. College, you didn't. I mean, even in a pro, you you don't really see that and from what, a defensive Yeah, but end. was he then a freshman, a sophomore? Twenty twenty two is twenty twenty. I think he was a sophomore was at that time. Yeah, an underclassman doing what he did, and in that environment as well. When Penn oh, State wow. was just as great of a team back then as they are now. So to go into the environment that is Happy Valley and do what he did, you can Buckeye fans can only hope yeah. that he does that again on Saturday. Yeah, they're going to need all they can get against this Penn State team because I think the past four years, this is the best Penn State team in those last four years by far, obviously. So, yeah, any fun facts that you found? Yes. So as I mentioned, Ohio State and Penn State have met consecutively for years upon years upon years but this is only going to be the second time that it's a top five matchup wow. or I should say yeah top five yeah. matchup yeah. between the two teams and the last time being in 1996 when it was number three Ohio State versus uh, number four Penn State and Ohio State won 38 to 7 so it was at reverse. Ohio Stadium. Uh, Ohio State was number three and then Penn State yeah, was number Yeah, it was reverse. <laughs> it was reverse. Wow. Well, hopefully the outcome is the same still. <laughs> yeah, but at Beaver Stadium, not Ohio State. Wow. And, and I just mentioned, too, like, I feel like this is the best team that Ohio State, in the last four years, Ohio State, obviously, has always been, like, a top five top. team. But Penn State, obviously, you has, know, has yeah. probably been top 10, top 15. But, again, they're top five. And this is just going to be an awesome matchup. Yeah, like, coming in last year when they came here, I mean, they were undefeated as well, but they were number seven. Yeah. They're number three right now. Wow. So, and, I mean – you talk about the implications of this game. Penn State's undefeated. They mm -hmm. can afford a loss. Ohio State, they cannot afford a second loss. But the thing is, it's like, can they? Because, again, this is the number three team. Similar to Oregon. They need to definitely win this game, obviously. But it's like, this is a top five team. I mean, you mentioned, like, the, the Georgia game, obviously. They lost to Bama, right? But they won against Texas, who we kind of see – they're playing at, at, like, you know, actual opponents now, it seems like. <laughs> no offense to Texas, but it's like they're playing actual, like, you know, opponents. So what if it's a one-point game like Oregon on, on either end? Yeah. You know, you never know. You never know with these voters, honestly. So it all depends on how they're feeling, I guess. But, yeah. And also, I wanted to mention, you mentioned, obviously, Penn State is undefeated. And a large reason because of that is Tyler Warren. He's a tight end, and he leads the team in receiving yards. 559 yards, but get this, 11.9 average per catch. That's giving, like, wide receivers numbers, but he's a tight end and he's catching balls like that, so watch out for him, guys. Yeah. He's going to definitely jump out. I believe it was Lorenzo Styles Jr. Uh, somebody asked him about Tyler Warren, and he said that they know he's a great player mm -hmm. and that they're going to have to pull out all the stops to stop him. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, any more fun facts? Yes, and of course – Will Howard is a Pennsylvania native, and Drew Aller is an Ohio native. And I just find it funny because, so like you funny. said, Will Howard, he said, I, I grew up a Penn State fan. I wanted to go to Penn State. And Drew Aller said the same thing uh, in an ESPN college game day feature about wow. him for last year's game, where, of course, they highlighted him being from Ohio. He said himself he grew up an Ohio State fan. He wanted to come to Ohio State. They didn't offer him until the last minute. So I thought that was very interesting how they both wanted to stay <laughs> in-state, go to their in-state schools, and now they're at yeah. the opposite. 
Wow, that's amazing. This is amazing. Like I said, it's so many great storylines. Julian Fleming, Will Howard, Drew Aller. Like, obviously, both coaches have struggled in top five matchups. Them getting the win. What does the implications of oh, if Ohio State lose, if, if Penn State lose? Like, yeah, I mean, like, obviously, Ryan Day will be on the hot chair once again. Yeah. But so will James Franklin because mm -hmm. he has not beaten he struggled, yeah. Ohio State. And yeah. that's something that, like, Penn State fans have – consistently and consistently voiced their yeah. frustration with. So, yeah. I mean, either coach, regardless of who wins and who loses, is going to be on odds. Yeah. Well, hopefully, obviously, this is a great game. Whoever, Whichever team wins, I just hope it's a great game, right? We're going to yeah. be in Happy Valley. It's going to be crazy there. Obviously, Penn State fans, Ohio State fans. So, we'll let you know what the outcome is next week. So, thank you guys for tuning in to Keep It a Buck Lantern Preview Style. And we'll see you next Thursday. It's Jayla Van Horn and Daniela Davila with, with Lantern, Lantern TV. TV.